Hello, welcome in. This was recorded live on my Twitch. And uh, basically, after working for nine months on the Persona series, I thought it would be fun to rank my opinions on the social links in the game. Kind of looking back at the different things that I've thought uh, and the different cool bits of, um, I guess, lore or mythology or whatever it may be. Just kind of going off the cuff as a more casual kind of Persona video uh, compared to the extremely extensive, hugely edited videos that take me like d months to work on. So, yeah. Um, we have done all but the main characters' videos have come out at the time of recording this. Let's put them in order of how they appear in the game. Um, and so I'll be giving a little bit mm, less of my thoughts on these because in the coming weeks we are going to be getting back to back all of these segments coming out. The one that just came out was the Nanako segment, of course. Um, and with the Nanako segment out, it finally has made it so all of the social links are now complete. So, I want to make clear rules here. Um, I feel like with a lot of tier lists, people end up doing one or two things. They either over-exaggerate how bad characters are, or they over-exaggerate how good characters are. And so you get a lot of, like, top or bottom, you know, filled things uh, for the sake of clickbait and just hot take -a Because, you know, if you say something that's stupid and wrong in a tier list, more people will comment and criticize you for being an idiot. And if that happens, then you get more chance of algorithm success. And basically, by calling this out, I am uh, I'm trying to point out that I'm not doing that. Uh, but you should still like and comment. Um, <laughs> these are the ones that will be coming in the coming weeks. We will talk about these, uh, but we'll just talk about them at the end. Um, I want to talk about all the ones that I've already done social links for. So I guess let's just go in order here. Um, I, Ebihara. I believe that she's... Really good, extremely interesting. As a social link, she's probably one of the most dynamic ones in the game, since she has multiple significantly different diverging paths, uh, depending on if you go with the romance at rank 6 or 7, or if you decide not to romance, which is what the game wants you to do, and you have multiple opportunities to break the link, reverse the link. Um, she really has the most complexity of any social link, and her message is generally a compelling one uh, for anybody who has struggle with self-identity and wanting to be loved while being true to themselves um it's it's a good message it's a good message um i don't think she quite hits the s tier i might move her up there but since she's the first one and once again i don't want to stack the list too high or too low i think i is a very underrated character in the very least um which i hope i displayed with a lot of the uh the stuff for my segment on her ina she is one of the most crapped on characters of any of them. Uh, I don't. I think it's because of her uh, goofy Pikachu face. But as a character, she's probably one of the most inspiring for me personally. Her message of sort of a selfless selfishness, or like a selfishness that breeds. Uh, more opportunity for selflessness is super interesting and complex. I feel like a lot of times selfishness and selflessness are painted as black and whites, goods and bads. Um, but really, you need to have a certain amount of selfishness to even acquire a position to where your selfless actions can even be positive. So, like, all she wants to do is spread music to people who are disenfranchised or suffering, like, in hospitals and whatnot. She wants to... She loves music so much, it means so much to her, and she wants to share it with the people around her, but she's so afraid of getting in other people's way of standing up for herself that she lets herself being trampled over. And so this selflessness of letting other people always take her spot causes her to be in a position where she's unable to actually give more selflessness through her own message and the things that she loves. Being music, obviously. And so I think that's an... I, I love that message. I love that message like crazy. It's something that's super under talked about and it's very uh, well developed throughout her link consistently. Um, so INA also I think is like probably A tier. Di <laughs> Do I like all these links now? I feel like I went into Persona 4 and I didn't. I, okay, I've got to I've got to start spreading things out. I got to start spreading things out. Unless I put it in F tier, um, I like the link quite a bit. All right. Uh, let's put Marie. Marie has some of the most effort and, like, quote-unquote budget um, put into her link out of any of them. Uh, most of her links go for 
if not 50%, then sometimes double the length of normal social links in the game. Also feature many more uh, locations and many more characters interacting and going into the story. Uh, there's also more variants for her stuff. Her stuff just generally has a lot more... Um, I, I don't want to say effort, but like a lot more effort put into it in terms of development. Thing is, though, I feel like while her message uh, thematically is really good, I feel like it, it sits around and kind of kicks around the bush for too long of her getting frustrated. I don't think it's a super great link. I'm going to put it in a, a C tier because I do think like in terms of the amount of different things you do in the game, it's super interesting, super fun. Let's go with the fox. Um, I think the fox is another maybe C tier. Um, and the main reason is because I think as a novelty, it's good that it exists. And I think we should have more experimental and interesting uh, links like this in the future that sort of subvert how a social link is supposed to be progressed. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. We don't get any of them like that really in Persona 3 or in Persona 5. Uh, but this sort of tying in of the Hermit's Arcana, which is the Fool after they've returned from the journey. So the Hermit is literally the Fool. He goes around the world, meets all the people, and then once he's completed his journey, he helps the people come home. Um, and that's what you do in this. The Fool, which is Yu Narukami, meets the Hermit, who has finished the journey, and then you help the other people along Inaba come home, solve their problems, get back to their place. Uh, it's thematically and based on the Arcana, incredibly cool what they did with it. And there's a lot of really interesting characters like the shop owner guy or the old man, uh, like the fishing guy. But a lot of the links are just kind of garbage. Uh, as far as side quests go, they're definitely the best side quests that are in the game, but it's really saying almost nothing when most of them are just grind fests for items. Yeah, I don't know. The novelty by itself, I think, makes its existence, like, worthwhile and interesting. Um, but it's not super helpful. Also, the SP management uh, perk uh, pretty much becomes super cheap and manageable only at the point where you don't need any sort of help with SP at all. I mean, by the time you get the fox up to, like, 6, 7, 8, at that point, you probably don't even need SP. There's like 10 other ways that you can already optimize and cheese the game for SP. And so, I don't know. It, it kind of hits a middle ground. There's definitely a lot of downsides to it. But I do think that no the novelty keeps it up. I'm actually scared for the Yosuke video, if I'm being honest. Because I realized after I edited it that like 15 minutes of the Yosuke video is dedicated to just like everything uh, gay. <laughs> all, all the gay controversy around him his cut romance link and the development process of the game and then his homophobia toward kanji and how that's handled and i do kind of come to yosuke's defense in the video and so not not as a person of course what he does is bad but from a writing perspective and from his character arc uh and i i don't know it's like i'm not <laughs> i'm not straight uh <laughs> you know but i do feel like there's a lot of uh, strong community pushback on Yosuke that's kind of unwarranted, and yet I'm also scared of that part of the community, um, that they'll misunderstand me. Um, I don't know. I, I think the Yosuke video is good, though. I mean, uh, especially the stuff where I go into the game development, and the reason why I think his romance link was cut, I think is a very interesting part. Uh, so if that video is out when you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, go check out the segment. Um, or if you're watching the stream now, I hope you enjoy it in a couple... <laughs> in a couple of things. 15 minutes of gay. No, it's true. It's true, though. It's the same kind of... Well, it's a different thing, but it's a similar thing with Chie's segment. Chie's segment has the first 25 minutes or so covering her dungeon uh, and Arcana... Or not Arcana. Covers her dungeon and her social link and everything like that. And then the last, like, <coughs> 25 minutes... <coughs> 25 minutes-ish, cover her arcana, her name, um, some general summary of, like, her message at the end, but then a good chunk of it has to do with her character flaws, because Chie is probably the most outspoken and unapologetic uh, in her character flaws in the game. It even ties in with the central message of her link, uh, and so I spend a lot of time talking about uh, negative things that Chie does uh, that are either empathetic or uh, irritating. So, like, there's there's a negative character trait that I really love about Chie that I talk about in the video is whenever she gets in the beauty contest, 
she lies. She lies uh, and says that she's, you know, kind of shy and that she likes pudding and sweets and stuff whenever we know that, of course, she's not shy at all. She's super aggressive, super straightforward, and she also loves steak. Um, and so it's a negative character trait in the sense that she, you know, lies to cover up who she is. But it's not negative in, like, a she's a bad person way. It's negative in, like, a I feel bad for her way. Like, I wish that she would grow past this. but she Because she's clearly insecure about who she is and wants to present herself a certain way to people to where she'll be liked. Um, I don't know. So it's a lot of stuff like that that I talk about with Chie. Uh, or I talk about her signing up all the guys for the, uh, the cross-dressing contest. Or her stealing, like, $200 from uh, Yosuke. You know, it's a lot of stuff. Anywho, um, Eddie Minami, 25 minute segment. This was a big one. This is a big one. As much as I like her from a philosophical perspective and think that she is very interesting, I don't think she's super engaging. Um, I, I don't think I don't think that she's super engaging. I find the ideas around her to be very engaging, and I find her link to be very well written. But as much as I respect the link and find it interesting, it's not one that resonates with me. And I sort of understand why it doesn't resonate with me, and I'm fine. It doesn't mean that it's a lower quality necessarily. Quality-wise, it's probably an A tier. Um, But from putting in my own personal feelings, like, oh, which social link do I want to play right now? It's going to very rarely be Eddie Minami. I'm going to put her in B tier. She's not nearly as forgettable or as bad as people put out. I think it's mainly people failing to get outside of their own limited perspective. But I also, I don't know. I can't say that she's goaded or anything. Hisano. Hisano suffers a lot of same things uh, with Eddie, uh, mainly being a lot of the exact same location and a lot of, well, I don't know. I think Eddie actually has a lot of interesting stuff, like with uh, whenever uh, her son hits you and stuff like that. Hisano is a very boring Link, but is a very well-written Link. Uh, Very interesting. The story evolves. Uh, it's a little cheap how at the beginning she calls herself death and says she kills her husband, and that's not even close to the truth. I think for sake of variety, as much as I do like Hisano's Link, and I think it's dealt with extremely mature and <coughs> interesting, Moses Oni, thank you very much for following. I don't think it's an overall super interesting uh, message. It's something that's definitely been covered in other capacities elsewhere. I think I'd probably give it a C tier. See, like... It's a C tier for a different reason than Marie and the Fox, though. The Fox is novelty and intrigue and something interesting and something that mixes things up in the gameplay. Marie's is extremely high effort, very uh, has a lot of uh, scene changes, a lot of variety in the characters that are in the scenes. They're very long, you know. There's a lot of there's a lot of work put into them, but I don't think it's super well written. Hers is like the opposite of Marie, I guess. Her segments are generally short, they're generally very low on flashiness, but they're very high on content. Very high on substance, or rather. So, yeah, I don't know. I give her uh, I give her the best of the C tiers. Hmm. Yeah, Daisuke. Oh. I love I love him. Uh Daisuke is awesome. I think tackling the idea of uh male intimacy from a unconventional perspective and standard is something that is very rarely done while also still addressing um, sort of these toxic kind of, uh, especially in like sporty, like hyper-masculine spaces, this sort of uh, unwillingness to talk or understand or open up about certain things uh, in fear of not fitting the perception or objectification that others have laid on to you. It's just, there's a lot going on in this link that is incredibly important even now. Like, this game was written in 2008. 2007, partially. For this game to... Hello, welcome in, unknown name, and welcome in, it's me, James. So yeah, I think even to this day, Daisuke's, like, message, and talking about, like, opening up, and being confident in his own sexuality... And, like, the way that he presents that. And that this hyper-masculine, aggressive um, sort of way and of being perceived of what it means to be a man um, is something that does not fit everyone and that it's fine that it doesn't. It doesn't make you lesser. It doesn't make you weird. It doesn't make anything wrong. 
Um, I don't know. There's just there's a lot of really good stuff, honestly. Yeah, I would say I'd say Dice Gate is an S tier. I think it's an S tier link. It's a really good link. The ideas that it addresses are things that we are still trying to come to grips with in society. Um, and things that have not been addressed very much in any games, movies, TV that I've seen. Very, very rarely does a topic get addressed so nuanced and, uh, empathetically. Oh, okay, what's your YouTube? I'll sub. Um, it's Hiding in Public? And then my side channel, which this video will be going up on, is Hiding in Private. Let's do Cole. Similarly, Cole, that video was crazy long. Um, and I think, uh, the ability for the game to cover him in a very nuanced way, as not just like, oh, yeah, that's the adopted character, or whatever, you know? Like, I, I hate, I hate whenever characters that have, like, a unique struggle are, uh, boiled down just to that struggle. It's such an empowering thing to see that be a major part of his life, and be treated seriously and maturely, but then also not just be the only thing about his character. He really has a lot more to him than just being adopted. Um, but even though that is a valid struggle, though, and it does inform a lot of his life perspective and a lot of his questioning of himself, and they really go into that well. Persona 4 is a game that is so focused on identity, all types of identity, all types of confusions, and this is such a interesting one, talking about your place within a family and, you know, blood and water and, like, the ways that we talk about those relationships. Um, I also think Cole's reactions are extremely, like, him. They don't feel like stereotypical or typical reactions. Sometimes Cole would react in a certain way, and I had to think about the way that he reacted and really, like, get into his head and understand how he was viewing the situation. There's also the argument between uh, Daisuke and Cole uh, in both their links, but especially in Cole's link that is such a realistic and interesting portrayal of friendship because... Like, and I and I talk about this in his segment, but literally the way that we understand, the way that Daisuke understands Cole's struggle is based on the way that Cole has described it to you and uh, him. And so Daisuke, going off of the information Cole has given, is arguing with Cole about his personal struggle, and they both are somewhat in the right, somewhat in the wrong. It's, I mean, it all, you'd almost think that they just like recorded a real conversation and then just mapped it onto some anime characters. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm gonna give Cole S tier as well. I, I think they're, I think they're both really incredible. Okay, Margaret. I love the heck out of Margaret, um, as a character. Um, and I also love the novelty, similar to the Hermit Link. But I will say, uh, her Link is mostly underwhelming. Other than a few references to the Persona 3 protagonists that come at the end, and of course the unlocking of her boss fight, which is not strictly a part of her social Link, you really don't get much. You get a fan service kiss, uh, and you get uh, a couple cringy things about her, you know, with the long nose or whatever. Igor having long nose. Eh, I, I, her link probably is the weakest in the entire game. I do like her character. Uh, I do think she's interesting and fun, and I do like um, like doing her link. I'm glad that it's not just a typical kind of upgrade. But I will say that it's pretty bland, especially when you compare it to Persona 3's Elizabeth, who actually, as a character, and I know this is an unpopular opinion, as a character, I actually like Elizabeth a lot less. I find her really cringy, like it, it kills me. It's like the type of cringe that like hurts me inside. But Elizabeth is a really well fleshed out uh, Link as well. Like she has lots of really fun antics, like her like skating down the slide or her dumping all the money, like the infinite money glitch into the fountain. You know, there's all sorts of fun, hilarious stuff that she does. And Margaret just kind of talks to you and says almost nothing for the first five links. And then in the last five, most of them are filler. And then some of them are more just like deep lore, big persona fan information. <coughs> So yeah, I don't know. As much as I do like Margaret, even more than Elizabeth, I do think they kind of dropped the ball with her link in terms of how it's implemented. Dice Gay Social Link has a lot of value and importance, especially in modern days with all of the gender roles and social expectations. Absolutely. Uh, I agree. We get a ton of diversity and perspectives thanks to the focus on identity rather than on a specific problem. Yes. Ryotaro Dojima. Obviously, I love the hell out of Dajima. He's great. Um, but I do think... As a social link, I think that his social link is just kind of acceptable. 
Like, it resonates, it's good, it's quality, but it is just sort of... It's what you expect in that regard. I do really like the personal conversations and the personal talks that you get with him later in his link. How he opens up to you, begins to trust you, and see you as this sort of little brother. I don't know. I do really like Dojima. I mean, as a character, I like Dojima as, like, S-tier. But in terms of his social link, I think... For the most part, you get a lot of the same quality stuff from Nanako's Link as you do in Dojima's. Uh, what Dojima adds really is <coughs> more like lore and information about his uh, wife's death and the Chisato case. And then his rededication to his family, while as resonant as it is, um, isn't, I mean, I mean, isn't as complex, interesting, or compelling, I think, as the A or S tiers. Uh, so I would say... Maybe it's as compelling, but it's not as, like, dynamic and interesting. Like, I feel like Cole and Daisuke's are such complicated uh, situations to understand and explain, and such important messages to obtain. And then, um, like, INA's uh, is really cool. And then Eyes is also similar to it. I don't think that she's as crazy as the S-tiers, but she has a lot of complexity in the way that her link branches. And I just feel like... Even though I, I'm sure a lot of people would think it was crazy seeing these two next to each other. I hope that my justification roughly has been here. And if this doesn't make sense, I have a full Persona 4 analysis series that's properly researched and scripted and everything going into everything else to justify my opinions, I guess. I don't know. This just this might be my bias coming through. I'm actually going to give Nanako an A tier because I feel like she brings up a lot more interesting topics. And oftentimes using this sort of uh, ignorant kind of culturally childish perspective on these large topics, it sometimes unveils a certain interesting way of looking at these ideas like death and family that we might overlook otherwise. I think Nanako's intentional childishness, um, intentional in a writing perspective, um, causes us to re-examine well-thought-out deep topics in simple uh, and interesting abstract ways. Which I feel like opens up a lot for, like, interesting conversation. Uh, but I don't think, overall, it's much deeper than Ryotaro's. Uh, I do think it's set up a little bit more, though, because there's at least more interesting ideas at play there. I was about to have an epiphany if her name was Sadako. Um, so the nurse, um, I talked about this a bit in my video on her. I don't think that they overall uh, handled the topic of her link and what she does at the start of her link or has a potential to do. Um, I don't think they handled it with the level of gravity that is appropriate. And I think a lot of that comes with how male survivors of these sort of things are often undermined or seen undermined or seen as jokes, uh, which just is mainly a, a product of the cultural times. Um, when this game came out, uh, who this game is marketed towards, etc. Um, but I do think it does undermine some of the value of her link. I think her link has really good quality things to be said in it, but I feel like it is probably the most muddled of the links in the game. Um, for the virtue of having a person in every link, I'm going to put her in F tier. I might, I might feel bad retrospectively put her in D. I don't think she's a bad link. There's a lot of value to be obtained from her link but I also feel like it's probably the most muddied and um, probably most sloppily handled of all of the links in the game. The message is a little bit more obscured by um, sort of the actions of the characters and the game from a writing perspective, like on a meta level, not taking things uh, into the same gravity that I feel like is appropriate. Although I don't think that them addressing the topic at all or having a character who does something bad like this is inherently bad or shouldn't be done, I do feel like it could have been handled better, and it isn't a light topic. Um, for, I mean, and maybe this is just because of my own, you know, personal trauma and experience and also things that I've had for male and female friends. It's not a, it's not a light topic, you know? It's, a, it's not something to... It's not something to casually cover as a part of your link. If you're going to cover it, then it should be really handled with a lot of care. Shu Nakajima. Uh, just like uh, our other Nakajima boy. Shu Nakajima, the tutored kid. Um, often extremely undervalued and slandered. 
Um, a lot of people say that nothing happens in his link till later, but I feel like that's just a, you know, that's just basic, uh, not having any reading comprehension. I mean, really, just not having any ability to understand or read stories with any capacity whatsoever. Um, his story unveil, uh, unveils itself very gradually in a very interesting way that mirrors the idea of the tower, even to the extent of having one man and one woman falling, that being his mother and him in this context, and the way that he isolated himself with this idea of knowledge that was falsely given to him, placing him in the tower before he realized that the lightning must strike and that he needs to be set free. Him taking his own direction in his life due to someone who he initially chastised, then felt bad for, and then came to him whenever he was in need. Um, it's a super interesting link that I feel like is so criminally undervalued. But I think the thing that really sets it above is its social commentary on the Japanese school system and the way that this sort of uh, Japanese school culture is pushed onto kids from an extremely young age. It's something I talked about a lot in my Shu Nakajima video and something that I think is a very serious topic that was handled extremely well. I, I'm going to seem like a crazy person for at least the second time, but I think he's an A tier. I think he's awesome. Even though you only go to like one place, I think the social commentary on the Japanese school system and the way that it uh, sort of goes into that uh, in a serious uh, and level way without being overly dramatic or overly selling a lot of the more tragic aspects of that culture um, <coughs> is really great. And then him himself and how he links to the tarot, or, uh, his tarot and his uh, tower arcana is also a perfect fit for his character. Uh, aesthetically... Uh, and story-wise. Probably one of the just bo straightforward, most consistently, like, well-written links, I guess. Like, all parts of it just connect to each other. Yumi Ozawa, I think there's a lot of really interesting and cool ideas. I feel like this is a more artistic, um, type of link. Like, um, if Shu is a very, like, nicely oiled machine, uh, Yumi, I feel like, is a lot more interesting ideas. So once again, we're talking about the multiple different stages of grief and positions at which one could grieve, uh, something that's very consistent throughout Persona 4, people grieving over different types of family or extended family or non-family or past, you know, from a point before grieving, after grieving, you know, this is during and after the grieving process. And then also there's a lot of interesting stuff linking the Japanese uh, of the poem that you learn near this beginning to the relationship between her and her father, which is something that almost no one ever brings up, but is a very intentional part of the link that I think is emotionally resonant. I think that's mainly because the Japanese puns in the translation don't make, um, don't make a good, I guess, translation. Um, the, the ocean of money... And, you know, um, the ski versus ski, uh, there's a lot of just, like, translation stuff that doesn't exactly come through unless you're really paying attention as an English fan. Uh, I think she's really good, but I do think that a lot of her link is bogged down, um, by, I mean, her being reasonably upset, but still just, like, her being upset, her not coming to the, uh, practice over and over again. I think some of the earlier Link stuff isn't super important to the overall message of the Link. Um, and it doesn't necessarily feel as well resolved as some other Links in regards to uh, tying up the loose ends, you know. It, it's sort of Chekhov's gun, you know. If you show the gun, then you have to imagine it'll be used at some point. But there's multiple things that I feel like could have been reintegrated into the message of the Link that it just kind of never comes back around to. I'm going to give her a B tier. Is it raining? I think it's raining outside. That's awesome. I love the rain. Well, that's another thing that Persona 4 had a lot of confidence to do that definitely you can see uh, <laughs> sort of had its desired effect in a regard. But like, I, Yumi, Shu, um, and Naoki are all links that start actively hostile to the player. They start actively hostile, mean, they brush you off, they crap on you, they insult you. They do whatever they can to get you away because they're being defensive, because they're going through a lot. They have issues that they need to resolve, and they, you know, they're not looking for... Uh, they don't know what solution they're even looking for. They don't know if you can give that to them. They don't know how to perceive you in this sort of system. 
because they're just hurting, you know? But I think a lot of people, it's like, that anime character in this video game was mean to me. They suck. I hate them. And it's it's, it's very childish. Uh, <laughs> and so they, they never open up to the characters. Um, it's like, it's like I, I got a comment on the Naoki video, uh, which this isn't a call out if you're still watching, by the way. Hey, hey, howdy. But I got a comment where it was like, um, yeah, after Naoki was mean to me that first time, I just couldn't get over it. I don't like him. I don't care. And... Um, I just replied, like, his, his close sister got murdered, like, within, like, a month of you meeting him. Like, I don't know. It's kind of reasonable that he would be aggressive. Like, what's his, what's your excuse for being so close-minded? Like, his sister died. <laughs> Speaking of Naoki Konishi, though, um, I do think... Uh, if you couldn't tell by the fact that pretty much this whole Persona 4 series really got inspired by me wanting to do a big video on Naoki because uh, of how underappreciated I thought he was, um, I'm going to put him in S tier because he's basically the inspiration for this whole series. Uh, I think he's so interesting, and I think the way that they portray grief is something that is not only very rarely portrayed, but also is almost impossible to portray in any sort of medium outside of video games. Because video games can portray the idea of many months going by a lot easier than like a movie or a TV show. Because with a TV show or a movie, you have to consistently lay into a certain emotional theme in order for it to really hit at the climax. But with a video game, especially in a way that Persona is set up, it kind of uniquely positions itself to talk about this sort of long-standing reaction to grief and how you eventually come to terms or suddenly feel the emotion far after you feel like you were supposed to. It's hard to portray that to an audience uh, in, like, a movie or whatever. So, yeah, Naoki uh, looks at a bunch of stuff. The main characters. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of them uh, in super high detail like I have previously. I have giant 40-plus minute videos coming out on every single one of them, other than Teddy. I think Teddy's like 35 minutes. So, um, if you want to hear my opinions on them, then I, I am going to talk about them for a long time. And it'll actually be researched and scripted rather than just off the cuff like this. Um, so if you want to see that, then watch those when they come out. But to give basic opinion, I would say... I think Yosuke is probably... I think he's one of the best links in the game. But I maybe give him like A tier. And then I give Chie... Uh, yeah, I give him, like, an A tier. I think, um, yeah. Chie. I think, yeah, you know what? Actually, I think Chie's link is really good. I, I give it an A tier as well. Specifically because of the, um, way that it addresses sort of the way that she has changed, the way she behaves in front of men specifically in order to hope that, uh, one day someone will recognize her value instead of her friends. Uh, it's heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking message. Um, Yukiko Social Link, I feel like, has a really good highs at the end, um, but starts very weak. Uh, I'd say overall it's maybe like a B tier. Kanji Social Link is S tier. Super solid. I love Kanji Social Link. Um, it definitely leans in on a lot of the nice guy, tough guy type of stuff. Uh, it also reintegrates the story of the pink alligator uh, with a completely new reference point for how to interpret the story. It's a lot of great stuff. Risei Social Link, I think it's probably an A tier. I think it's super solid. A lot of it's a retread of her dungeon, but it's a retread in a more nuanced sense for anybody who missed the message the first time. Of course, I've seen people talk about her link as well, and it seems like they missed the message the second time as well, but uh, I, I love the idea of the multiple selves and uh, what makes a true you and how running away and trying to find your true self sometimes are the same thing because you are always your true self regardless of what you do um teddy's link uh oh yeah social link wise yeah i don't know it's just acceptable i don't know his social link is literally just parts of other major events and those events are fine but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give him the full credit because most of the time Big event happens, and then he has a small little bit at the end. So, I'd say there. I'd say Adachi's link is probably, um... 
B tier, for such a major character, it really does a lot to add context to where he came from, what his worldview is, while also keeping things purposely ambiguous, because Adachi is someone who likes to uh, lie, over-exaggerate, and um, there's a lot of things within his social link that are often contradictory um, from other things that he'll say, where you can clearly tell he's trying to understand what kind of person you are and then fit himself to fit your empathy toward him. Um, and I just think that whole dynamic is extremely interesting. But unfortunately, because of the way his personality is, he does kind of stay in this somewhat unknowable zone where you don't actually gain a lot from his social link comparatively to what you could have, at least, um, in terms of understanding Adachi. Uh, than what you might have expected for a social link of the same kind. Also, a lot of the social links are based just, uh, oh, you want to get some food? Yeah, I'll get some food next time. You know, that sort of thing. I don't know. B tier, definitely a good addition that Golden made, uh, and a lot more context for his character, but a not, not a lot more clear context for his character. Not a lot of certain things that were added to the pool. Um, like, even the stuff about his parents is very inconsistent in how he talks about it. And the way that he talks about the crime of the, the minor incident um, that got him thrown in the boonies, he's very inconsistent in how he describes the event. It's clear that he's trying to word things in a way that gains your um, sympathy uh, while not giving enough details that, uh, you know, you piece together the actual puzzle because then you wouldn't be empathetic towards him. Naoto um, is my favorite character in Persona 4. Uh, I love her social link. I... She's one of two links that you can reverse, the other being I, Ebihara. Uh, I think that the idea of the Phantom Thief and the game and everything is really fun. <sighs> but even though she's my favorite character in the game, I'm not sure if I would give her an S tier. I think her Valentine's Day event is S tier, definitely. And uh, her Ultimate Awakening, like there's plenty of things, but I wouldn't exactly say it's consistently S tier. I think, like, Kanji's Link is consistently S-tier. Yeah. I don't know. I might put her in A-tier. Okay. For just the social link. This is my persona for social link ranking. Not how much I like the characters, but how interesting I think the social links are in terms of, like, how they're well-written, or the ideas they explore, or uh, how well they handle those ideas or a number of different things. I would say this is how I generally feel about the social links. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you want to be a part of one of these recordings in the future, go over to my Twitch, heck yeah, uh, and we'll be doing more streams like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any opinions, agreements, disagreements, anything like that, feel free to comment below, but also if you want an expanded uh, opinion from me of what I think of these, uh, rather than the cliff notes, I have segments or will have segments on every single one of these characters on this channel. Uh, please feel free to check out the playlist or um, whichever ones seemed interested to you. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate my Patreon supporters, of course, as always, and my wonderful Twitch supporters as well. So I'll see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoy the upcoming scripted, edited analysis rather than this more off-the-cuff video.